This tutorial is sponsored by Patreon. Thank you all for your support. Hello everyone, welcome to which I believe would be 16th episode of our horror uh, series. Uh, I had a request to create an electricity box from one of my Patreons, so well, let's just make an electricity box. So I will just duplicate this wall here, so we have some space. You can put it wherever you want in the level, I'm just going to show you how to get the functionality work. Um, so basically I made a electricity box in Blender, uh, you're gonna be able to download it in the description. So uh, it looks like this, pretty simple uh, electricity box and does all of my models, the pivot is floating but yeah, so this is the electricity box. So let's go ahead and create a blueprint actor for it. So let's go to the blueprints, actors, and every time we want to interact with something, it needs to be an actor. So let's just call it uh, BP Electricity Box. So right click, blueprint class, actor. Open it up. And as you can see here, we have a uh, our components here, which we will, we will add static meshes. So static mesh one uh, will be electricity body box, which is gonna be basically the box. Uh, let's see where is it. We can just center it like this, but it doesn't matter really. Uh, now we're gonna add a static box and a static <laughs> static mesh, and it's gonna be uh, electricity doors box. And this is the important part because this is gonna be animated. So, as you know, to create a good animation here, let's just change to unlit. Um, to create a good animation here, uh, we need to set up our pivot and how we do this is by adding a scene compo component, calling it doors pivot. And now if we go ahead and move it, we can move it to fit the literal frame of the door. Like this. So now we can test it by uh, just simply dragging electricity doors in, uh, as a child of the doors pivot. And now if we select the doors pivot, we can see how would it look like. This is how it would open. But uh, our doors need to be a little bit more inside, I believe. So select the doors pivot now. And you can now adjust the doors to your liking now let's see now I think that looks fine for a tutorial but you can tweak it around and uh, get it uh, working better let me just see yeah that's fine so uh, let's go ahead and uh, create the functions for it uh, first I'm gonna create animation so under our class settings we need to implement the bpi interact like that and under the interfaces we need to set is interactable to be true right and on interact we want to check if the uh, electricity box doors opened and um that's going to be of type boolean and by default it's going to be false because it's going to be closed by default so here we're going to check okay is the electricity box doors opened uh, like that and uh, then not a branch we're gonna add a timeline which is going to be open close electricity box doors like this and if electricity box doors are open 
If that's true, we want to reverse it. And if it's not, then we want to play it. Now we're gonna get our doors pivot, get relative rotation, like this. And we're gonna split uh, we're gonna split struct spin. And from the doors pivot we want to set relative rotation as well. Now the best way to check which rotation you need is to simply go to viewport, select doors pivot and see how much you want to open it. For example, as you can see here, I want to open it 130 for example. So let's open it 130 and that was, uh, if, I, if I'm correct, Z. Yeah. So here, this one is going to need to go here. So just plug this one in up there. So what I want to do is, so I want to open it for, uh, sorry, I'm stupid, should have seen. Yeah, it's positive 130. So I'm going to create a float track, call it alpha, for example, and length is going to be like two or one. That's the duration of our animation. And hold shift and left click to create these two. And the first one is going to be time zero, value zero, because it starts from zero. And the other one is going to be time one and value 130, because that's how much we want to open it, how wide. Perfect. So now what we need to do is we need to determine, uh, we can get not boolean here, so the co uh, so the, it looks better. So if the electric box doors are not opened, if that's true, we want to open it. And if false, if they're opened, we want to close. Just like that. We can delete this so it doesn't bother us. Like that. And now, um, let's... So, so to be able to open it again, right, uh, we would need to set this boolean here after true and false. So if the elect if we open the doors, that means they're open. If we close, that means they're not open. So boolean is false. And that would be our animation, I'm pretty sure. Let's go ahead and check it out. Let's rotate it. If I go ahead and play, I press E. Nothing really happens, and why is that? Let's see. So, electricity door is opened. They are not. Oh, <laughs> we need to connect the Z into the alpha. That's my bad. Okay, let's go ahead and check it out. So, if we go and try to open it, as you can see, the doors are opening pretty good. But now we need to add some functionalities inside. So, let's go ahead and uh, create it. Okay, so we got the animation working. So now we need to create uh, some functionalities, right? Because the Sony animation does nothing. So what we want to do is when electricity goes off, you need to open the electricity box, pull the trigger, and then it opens electricity. Uh, so before I do that, I actually want to create uh, some sound. So we finish our animation. And, sorry, from the electricity box doors open, true, we're gonna, I, I just implemented some audio, but I'm gonna leave it in the description so you can download, just with like the model. So this is gonna be for opening my electricity box, open box, and right, just right click and create queue because we have much more functionalities uh, with the queue 
and if we go ahead inside of it you can see we can adjust everything we can just make it loop we can do whatever we want we can do override automation everything um so yeah let's here uh open doors and into reverse i have sound for closing and now we have a small problem that uh, if player spams the doors he's gonna spam the sound as well so how do we fix that simply pull do once so this node says okay i'm gonna do this only once until you give me reset and we're gonna reset it by this like that so now we need to wait for the animation to end and even if I spam you can hear my keyboard you can only do it once the animation is done right so that's great uh, let's just uh, double click this to make it a little bit nicer like that so for this uh, functionality now to pull the trigger uh, we will need a child actor that's going to be inside of our box and also we're going to need an uh, interface as well so let's uh, do that so this is only our box and now we need our trigger as well uh, but before i do that i will go to my props to electricity box i will double click electricity box and i will set its collision to be block all, collision preset block all, and scroll down collision complexity. I'm gonna use complex collision as simple. So because by default this model is gonna like be full closed with collision, collision is gonna block your so you're not even gonna be able to reach to the inside. So now it really makes it uh, go on the corners. So this is very simple way of creating good collision. Um, so that's it for that. And our book and our doors can live like block all. They don't need custom collision because they are fine like this. Okay, <clears throat> so that's it for that. We can close it out. Let's create a trigger. And to not make it a mess here, I'm gonna create electricity box and trigger. And I'm gonna pull the electricity box here. I'm gonna set the color. This is only because of my eyes. You can do whatever you want with the colors. Okay, so now I have an electricity box here. I'm gonna go blueprint class, another actor, BP add, uh, BP um, trigger. And I don't have a model for trigger, but we can simply create it inside of here. Um, actually, let me just go ahead and model the trigger for you. Be right back. So we are back. Okay, I went ahead and I created the trigger. So now we can go back to BP trigger and add static mesh and call it a trigger. Uh, just trigger. Static mesh is going to be trigger as well, like that. I'm not sure if this is uh, too big, but I'm also gonna add the pivot, and uh, it's gonna be scene. So add the scene component like this. Don't make it a child. First, move it, and I think this is gonna be fine, like here somewhere. And now put it like that, and let's see how that works. As you can see, we put it there. In the blind so we can just move it like this and it's really nice nice feeling okay uh, trigger uh, pivot rename the scene component to trigger pivot now and this is our trigger pivot uh, now we need to add box collision so we have easier time uh, hitting this uh, pivot this not pivot this mesh so the player doesn't need to click basically inside of the um, this guy 
So if the, it, if we don't have this collision, the player needs to click on it exactly. But we just want to make uh, it easier for our player. It's just quality of life. And we can make it like this. That should be fine. Yep. And now, for this trigger as well, we need animation. And as well, we need interact. So we are going to implement the interact interface as usual. And is interactable is going to be set to true like this. And here uh, we need to set the trigger box. Um, let's just add the timeline. Pull trigger. And um, from here, we're gonna take the trigger pivot. We're gonna get relative rotation. Was it rotation? Let me see for sure this was, but how much? So we want to, oh, the box shouldn't be a child, by the way. Box should be, box should be by itself. So when we turn, we don't mess with the box collision. Very important. Let's make it a little bit bigger this so what was the number if we uh, okay so it's uh, zero <coughs> by default it should be fifth minus 50 I feel like minus 40 by default and 40 when it's down it's okay from minus 40 to 40 on the x-axis okay so get relative rotation and uh, from the trigger pivot, pivot set relative rotation and connect it to the update so we have that animation going on split struck pin connect y to y z to z and the x is gonna go here uh, but uh, let me just see so the start is uh, start rotation is how much minus 40 okay so the start is minus 40 that means here if we set length to one that's how long the animation is going to be and we add the flow track call it alpha again we will hold shift left click hold shift left click the first one is going to be time zero and the value minus 40 because that's our starting value and the other one is going to be time one and value 40 because that's the our end value um, correct so yeah that's uh, uh, that we can also make uh, our animation feel a little bit more smooth if we select both with shift shift left click shift left click so you select both right, right click and get auto so it makes just more natural the animation we can do it here as well like that okay <clears throat> so now let's get um, trigger trigger pulled and it's gonna be if trigger is already pulled we're gonna get it and branch it out and if, if the trigger is pulled we want to reverse it but if the trigger is not pulled we want to pull it and let's just get not boolean here so what this does is basically we can uh, say okay if the trigger is pulled not so if the trigger is not pulled then we want to play it but if trigger is not pulled and it's false so it means it's pulled we need to reverse it just like that great so now let's go to electricity box let's make these doors mesh select mesh not visible for the time of being 
just so I can put the and now in the components child actor add the child actor so I made the uh, doors invisible so I can put the child actor basically and don't make it a child of any kind and now in the child in the child actor we can select the child and it can be BP trigger like this and now you can play with it how you like I'm gonna need to lower the camera speed but be careful that this trigger box doesn't overlap with the doors because it can create some problems later and let me get my doors now visible okay so it's not overlapping nice uh, also this trigger box is gonna be of kind block all like that perfect so let's go ahead and test this mm, we can set it as well to tell us uh, print string trigger box pulled trigger box uh, pulled up pulled down I guess just for testing so now if we go ahead and go there we open it as you can see we have a trigger here but uh, it didn't play the animation so let's oh correct I always forget to plug this in trigger pull down oh and yeah because we made this we need to also set it here so this works let's just do um, once we tr set the trigger to be down we want to make it trigger pulled and this is gonna be trigger not pulled like this and now we can go ahead and spam it but I also wanna do the same thing that I did with the doors so let's go ahead and create that uh, this video is getting a little bit long because this is already the third part so I think it took like 30 minutes or something um, from here let's just do once so do once before everything and then just finished reset also if you didn't uh, if you were writing code and you didn't see it didn't work because I didn't pull this into alpha so just make sure you pull that and let's make this so it's a little bit cleaner like that so now we shouldn't be able to spam it okay so now we need to create some events that will uh, stop so literally it will uh, turn off the lights and when it turns off the light, it puts the trigger back to the normal uh, location. When we pull the trigger, we set the light, uh, electricity to be off and etc. But this video is getting too long, so I'm gonna make it in two parts. So I'll end the video here and uh, create uh, the functions in the other episode. That is gonna go in the same time when this one goes out. I'm not gonna upload this one without it. So you can just go ahead and watch the next episode right now, uh, you have it on the channel. Uh, so this first part was uh, animation and stuff, and the second part is going to be functionalities. So thank you for watching and see you in the next episode.